I was driving through the Pacific Northwest. It's a beautiful, lush forest. You're driving around a curve, and the next thing you see on the mountainside is this clear cut, right? Just this big chunk of the forest has just been cut down by the lumber industry. And that right. hits something inside you. That's a pain that you feel. Like it's something that isn't necessarily, maybe there's a physiological response you're having, but it's also something deeper than that. And there's a reason we feel that way. And sometimes you you have those experiences that breaks through the illusion of separation. And um, when you have an entire um, paradigm built on that premise, it it's I mean it's obviously unsustainable. It can't work for too much longer anyway. But I, I think that people on an individual level and on a collective level too occasionally will have these piercing moments where something just is so obviously not right that it under it just undermines the story that we're telling. It's kind of like uh, you know I try to like like with uh, you know like again the Dakota Access Pipeline and the, the, the water protectors, they're just standing there, you know, taking the brunt of police brutality, right? And I imagine that there are police officers, these guys and, and women in riot gear, and they're spraying cold water on these people in sub, you know, sub temperatures, freezing temperatures. And I imagine on some level, certain, certain of, not all of them, but some of them were like, this isn't right. <laughs> Something is wrong here. This doesn't, this isn't how we're supposed to deal with this, but they're stuck. They're still stuck in the old story. And that's how they make sense of things. So unless you provide a very real and compelling alternate version of how you can view this, people are going to continue to act out in the interest of, of, of continuing and, and perpetuating this way of thinking and this story into the future. So it's important for people like you to question these things, to, to let people understand it, and then to kind of, ex I mean, I, I don't think there's a there's an answer for what we should do, but I but I think that this is a time of experimentation. This is a time when you need to start to think about, well, what will work? What can we do? How can we adapt to these crises? And how can we provide a better way of, of living and existing in the world that, that, that more directly connects us with the mm -hmm. world that we have so sorely ignored and abused? Yes. Yeah, I think you're so, so right about that, Patrick. And, um, you know, as you were talking, uh, what came to my mind was this, Wonderful, uh, Chinese concept, or I should say tra traditional Chinese concept, um, that they, um, it's a word they have, which is ren. That's like R-E-N. Mm -hmm. And, um, about a thousand years ago, it, during the Neo-Confucian period there, they developed this amazing, uh, way of understanding the cosmos. And the, the, the concept about ren, uh, was, it was this kind of embodied recognition of the absolute connectivity uh, between who you are and the entire natural world around you. Um, and so the thing is, you know, when we think of, when we use kind of uh, more westernized concepts, or that may have been sort of eastern in some source, but we've westernized them, things like sort of unconditional love or whatever, it tends to be a little bit less embodied is that, you know, using our mind, we can sort of recognize that we're all one or, um, consciousness is, um, is all, you know, whatever we might come across. But this notion of Ren, which I talk about in my book, is, is more of an embodied, engaged way of recognizing our connectedness. So that to your point, when you see something that is destroyed in the natural world around you, you actually feel it. You actually feel it in your body as if part of your own body is being damaged. Um, and what I find so interesting is that um, the word for um, numbness in um, in Chinese, in the Chinese language, basically is bu ren, which is like no ren. So um, mm. if you think about how that applies to our own world and our um, the way we relate to it right now, it's like people who don't recognize that sense of connection it's not because that connection's not there but they become numbed to it and so you know even when they're actually being touched um it's as though our civilization has applied this anesthetic to the actual feeling tone of that connectivity with nature which is actually a real connection but we've just become um, numbed to it and i think that's such a powerful way of understanding it 